What is up you guys, welcome back to the channel. It is your boy Captain Jack, you can see this remote coastline. If you saw last week's episode, we got into some serious action. Not a ton, but this one, we have some crazy, crazy dives coming your way. So stay tuned, enjoy this trip, it is a good one. All right, you guys, welcome back underwater and welcome to the voiceovers. Now we do some awesome dives this whole trip. And if you wanna hold your breath, here's the countdown timer and let's go. So now these areas that we're at, um, they were not actual spots. I found them through Google Earth, through looking at the different shades of blue and um, a couple of these spots actually turned out to be pretty good. This was, spot was the first one we went to. It was a big coral reef in the middle of the sand. Um, we, when we first hopped in, I saw a nice Kubera on the top of it. Uh, and I went down to the top just to sit there, hope that something would come in. I do a little grunting. I just going down. This is my first dive of the day. Make sure I'm relaxing <laughs> and keeping my eyes peeled for something. And now I see that this you know, edge is pretty significant. So I decided to kick a little forward, drop over the edge, hoping there may be like a rock hind or a strawberry grouper inside of one of these caves. Uh, but I didn't find that, but I did find some lobster. And now these lobster, not only will we eat them, but we will also uh, do a little trick later on in the video that you guys will love to see. And um, do not go anywhere. There's some insane dives using these lobster carcasses that you're not gonna wanna miss out on. And um, you can see using that Hawaiian sling makes it very simple to shoot and it makes it really simple to take the uh, lobster off of the shaft, just slide him off the end. See that Kubera? That was a Kubera? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll show him off this head. There'll, there'll probably be mountains coming in. This is a good area. Oh uh, yeah, there's one more right next to this one. So now here we go making another dive. You can hold your breath again and see if you can stay down there with us. This is Frog's camera. This is another diver that we're with. Um, excellent diver. He's done a bunch of spear fishing tournaments and he's also a sling shooter, which I have mad respect for. Um, and same thing, we're kind of hitting these big coral reefs, working the edges of them. And we're pretty deep at this point. Um, and we're hoping for hogfish, mutton, grouper. Uh, but the best thing to do is to work these edges. Um, Frog doesn't find a grouper or a mutton or a hog, but he does find something else. And it is an absolute giant. So keep watching and enjoy and just check out this absolute stud that he pulls up from the depths. So while we were roughly in the same area, Frog also took a drop on this deep stuff, tracked down a big hog and laid a killer shot with the Hawaiian sling, um, which is a huge feat, especially at depth and free shafting. Nice job. Dude, you got that on GoPro. Nice. All right, so here we do another dive, same area. You can see the depths, it's pretty deep. It's almost 80 feet. It might even be 80 feet, I'm not sure. But uh, I kind of am hovering that edge. There's a slight bit of current and I'm just basically floating right on that edge. So I'm, you know, when I drop, I'm going straight down. You see the weapon of choice I'm using is the Hawaiian sling, but I actually have it tethered to a line. That way I'm not wearing myself out trying to chase down a fish if I shoot it with the uh, sling. But on this drop, we really haven't seen a whole lot of fish, but we've been working this edge and you saw that monster, monster lobster that Frog got, which kind of was a telltale that this is a heavy um, lobster populated area. And like I said, we start shooting those guys and on this side, it's actually pretty cool. I try to, um, I try to get more than one on one drop, uh, but see if you can, um, 
hold your breath all the way to the end. First one I come up to, easy shot. Try to go through the head so you don't hit the tail, um, so you don't ruin any of that meat. And um, on this guy, I pulled him out using the barb, and I pushed the barb a little bit extra through. And now on my way down, I saw a couple of antennas a little farther down in another crack, and I was hoping to get a two for one. So I see another lobster right here around the corner. I try to get enough of the spear out so I could see the spear and take the shot. Unfortunately, I just, I think I may have hit into the knuckles and didn't get full penetration. Um, didn't want to stress it or hang down there too long. So I went up and uh, I believe Frog or uh, Ricky or somebody went down and got this other lobster out of this hole. But like I said, stay tuned. You're going to want to see us use these lobster carcasses and it is going to blow your mind on what you're about to see on these next couple dives that we do. Oh, yeah, there's one more. I almost just kebobbed the other one. All right, you guys, so as we're waiting for us to get into the serious, serious fish, um, we hit this shallow spot right before, and um, it's crazy because you see it just looks like a little crack, you know, little edge right here in the reef. Um, but you never know till you get a closer look. And I ended up going under this thing, and the cave in this is unreal. And I think that was um, either a yellow mouth or a, um, I don't think it was a scamp um, or maybe a small yellowfin, but there was a grouper kind of shaded with all of this bait in here. And uh, like I said, I think it was a yellow mouth. Uh, I wasn't really keen on shooting it. I was going to go ahead and let somebody else shoot it, but we ended up not finding it after I go through this dive. But just really cool the amount of the weird things you see without even expecting it and even in shallow water and i think we're in like maybe 20 feet or maybe less uh but yeah what a really cool dive uh and you never know what you're gonna see over here in the bahamas and i made sure all the other guys got a chance to do this swim through really epic dive really cool spot all right so here we go this is the absolute money spot now this is frog's camera and luckily he was wearing a gopro and you will see what kind of life is at this bottom we're in like i think between 60 and 70 feet somewhere around there but you can see all the horse eye jacks just kind of congregating and that means there's gonna be a lot of life around and you'll see it as he makes his way to the bottom there's a mutton right there in the top of his screen but he's just kind of letting the chum do its job and bring in all the fish and what we're doing is we tailed those lobster and we're using the um the legs and the carcass and sending down little pieces at a time to allow all these fish to feed and now there's more even more muttons on the bottom and he goes down and sits in the sand and you can see a little piece of the uh, lobster right there but these are kuberas at the top of the screen and muttons um, and we do a couple of dives like this I'm sure you're at home like dying looking at all these kuberas that are just swimming up to him and for him to have the patience to not you know shoot one of these things is pretty remarkable and it was almost inspiring so it kind of leads me to do another dive similar to this um and we're just kind of hoping that you know one of the younger guys get a shot on one of these nice kuberas uh, which they end up do you know kind of watch a little bit they do towards the end get some really cool footage of these guys plugging these nice fish and like i said just muttons kuberas and here comes a permit just cruising through um and this is really what reefs should look like and it's incredible the amount of life um and i'm happy that he was able to make this dive and uh capture it all on video and uh share it with you guys so um but yeah stay tuned we're gonna get some more footage and uh yeah do not go anywhere there's an epic dive here in just a minute so uh make sure you get a little bit of rest um and this was me i didn't do it i just started filming when i was at the bottom and uh, yeah, Kuberas everywhere, muttons everywhere. There were grouper uh, off in the distance, and there were some really, really big Kuberas that we were hoping would come in, but they um, they kind of stayed kept their distance. But uh, these other guys are like perfect eating size, um, and I kind of got into uh, into a, a groove of just filming. Um, but this is the dive that I was super proud of. Really long dive. See if you guys can hold your breath. And you see the little pieces of 
lobster kind of coasting down to the bottom. We're getting the fish really, really chum drunk to where they all hang around. We get to be very selective. Um, and I'm bouncing a, back and forth from my head GoPro to the GoPro stick. Um, I think that's a Hero 9 on the stick and I'm using a Hero 8 on my head. Uh, so you can kind of see the comparison and the difference between the two. Uh, but yeah, you see these muttons just hanging around and I don't even know if I have my pole spear. I think I gave it to somebody to hold on to. Um, but yeah, just making my way down to the bottom and I feel really, really good on this dive. Um, but yeah, just the amount of life I see is just insane on this dive. Yeah, 74 feet to the sand. Um, and yeah, just muttons were so, so comfortable. And I think they just knew that I didn't have a uh, intentions to kill. They could just feel it. They, they could see my demeanor. I wasn't being very aggressive. And I could obviously easily shoot one of these muttons. Uh, I was almost touching them with the GoPro stick. And they don't... They ended up, um, if you keep watching, they start buzzing, you know, me from behind trying to like, you know, see what I am. The same thing. There's a ye little yellow fin under that ledge right there to the left. But yeah, just incredible. The amount of life just sitting down here. And I was so relaxed on this dive. Um, and keep, if you're holding your breath on this dive, keep holding it. You still have a little bit to go. Uh, like I said, but I wouldn't really push myself <clears throat> on these dives. Unless I had, you know, good buddy divers and these guys were just chilling at the surface. You could see me from the surface. So um, if anything bad happened, if I pushed myself, they would definitely be there to, you know, help back me up. Yeah, just what an incredible. See that guy? He kind of buzzed me from behind. I kind of spooked me a little bit. But yeah, what a crazy good dive. And this dive was probably a little over uh, a minute 30. Or sorry, 2 minutes 30 seconds because I cut the GoPro just a little bit before I get to the surface. Um, yeah, what an epic dive. So many fish, and we're about to get into them right now. So I'm in camera mode. Um, Bradley makes a drop. He has the GoPro on his head, so you get a little kill shot POV um, view here. But I'm kind of following him. I don't want to get too close because... You know, the fish, kuberas, muttons, if you see, they see two divers booking it towards them, there's more likely to spook. But he gets in, tries to close the gap on this kubera. And you see he's using the um, the roller, the head uh, headhunter nomad roller, so he gets that little extra range while still getting the penetration. Um, but luckily I'm there, I go there, grab a hold of his spear, and I kind of stay close to the fish in case the shark comes by. I need to like kick him away or poke him away with the GoPro stick, but epic fish. I think that's the first fish we get, and we just keep getting more and more uh, as the day goes on. Bradley, get a hold of that fish. Slip to some, like, on the edge. Nice, dude. Good job. Hell yeah. I was right next to you the whole time. I got that whole thing on video. Yeah. I stopped kicking. I, I just sat back and watched him just go after it. I got it on my GoPro too. Nice, dude. Sick. So at this point, it was literally like just, all right, who wants to go shoot a fish? So Ricky made a drop and he was hoping for one of the Kuberas, uh, but he ended up having to uh, settle for a mutton. Landed a really good shot. He was in no need, no stress. So I was just there just to back him up in case he needed me. Uh, just kind of getting some footage and showing you some third person uh, spear fishing, which I love, love to get. Nice, dude. Uh. All right, so now these guys got me all fired up. I want to shoot a mutt and I've been down there staring at him, videoing. So now I go ahead and make a drop and I think all the action kind of brought in the sharks. Um, Luckily, this shark that came in hot on me was not, you know, a very dangerous shark. It's one of those nurse sharks. Um, and uh, I kind of just gave him a little kick there, got him out of the way, lined up on this mutton. I was going for the stone shot, and 
I guess, I mean, that's the risk you take whenever you're going for the stone shots. If you get a little high, it ends up being a flesh wound off the top of their, you know, that meaty part in their head. Um, this guy will probably live. Uh, he didn't even bolt off. He just kind of cruised away like, you know, that probably didn't do much to him. Um, but high risk, high reward. I was going for the stone shot. Didn't land it, but I still ended up getting my mutton later on. So, you know, stay tuned to check that out. And, uh, yeah, I kind of bummed on that, but, uh, you know, it happens. Huh? Yeah. No, no, it's a bit, big mutton. I, I was trying to go for a stow shot. I should have just. Yeah, single mutton to come close. I should have just. Close to. These things are they were surrounding me. So we end up going to a shallower area, and this spot, um, a nice grouper was tucked up under this edge. I told Richard to go down and plug him. Uh, ended up being a tiger grouper, but he was using the pole spear, got a nice shot in this fish, pulled him away from the rocks so he didn't go farther in a crack brought him to the surface um but yeah tiger grouper are delicious and uh but if we didn't eat it somebody else definitely tiger, will tiger grouper yes sir i'm the chili right <laughs> yeah it's a tiger yes sir we got the uh and so the only reason I, you know, am questionable about getting tiger groupers is because I got ciguatera from them. And ciguatera is a toxin that these fish carry. Uh, and because the smaller fish are really old fish. But you can really see the distinctive, like, between tiger grouper and a black grouper. And it's because of the, you'll see little stripes in the tiger grouper. And also they have that kind of jagged, gnarly, uh, you know, serrated tail. But uh, this is Bradley's cam. Uh, the guy who just shot that Kubera a couple uh, clips before, he bolts after a mutton snapper, chases him down, lands a good shot, um, and he ends up getting, uh, I think he didn't have time. He hopped in and saw this fish, made a drop, didn't have time to attach his belt reel, so he just left his spear down there, but you see me make it a beeline down to make sure we secure this fish, and which we do, um, but it also brings in a lot of commotion which brought in these yellow jacks um and yellow jacks are absolutely delicious and again this is bradley's cam we we got that mutton pulled him up bradley lined up on this yellow jack that guy kind of did the little matrix move dodged him uh but luckily he did a little bit of grunting these guys will definitely circle back lands a really good gill plate shot here and that's a very conservative shot um, you can see the other one before he's kind of go for, going for that perfect stone shot and that's the you know the risk I did the same thing the dive before on the mutton But I'm definitely down for some redemption and when he shot this it brought in a lot of commotion You can see me over there in the corner Of the screen. I'm there kind of helping him pull up his fish make sure you know Play shark defense and as he's doing that he points out a nice mutton um, And so I go ahead. This is my GoPro now I make a dive bomb and whenever those buttons are fired up they'll kind of come in check out what's going on if there's no real food they'll just kind of take a peek and then leave so I dive bomb this guy straight up straight down he starts to pick up speed and I land a good shot uh, I was trying to go for the spine um, and I'm making sure I get my spear off of the reef because that's a high chance of it ripping out um, and I kind of want to give him a little bit of slack to swim around because it's a little high but luckily it was, you know, a good enough shot to where the fish doesn't leave. I get a hold of that steel slip tip, then get a hold of the fish, and I'm pretty stoked about this. One of my uh, first buttons of the trip. And it is absolutely a good one. I cannot hear. And then of course, always bleed and brain. Um, like I said, I've, I've said before in my other videos, uh, bleeding helps get that bloodline out of the meat. And then also gutting not only potentially attracts more fish, but it cools the fish down to where it doesn't, you know, melt ice in the cooler and it makes it uh, less stinky when you're Ricky. filleting the fish. Ricky, yo. Ricky, yo, yo, yo. Ricky. Dude, there was an even bigger yeah. button in this. Yeah, uh, keep it on this chump. So now I go ahead and threw my fish and the pole spear in the boat. And now I, you know, subbed it out for the camera. I wanted to play kind of, you know, helper, 
duty with these guys. Um, I make a drop with Ricky. He does a really good um, dive here. He actually is down for quite some time. Uh, longer than I'm down. <laughs> so I down there, he's kind of, this is exactly what you want to do. Be flush with the reef, doing some grunting, some dusting, and just trying to pull in something. And this is like prime time mutton territory. And they just cruise these little reef structures and uh, they just look for an opportunity for food. And whenever they sense some grunting, they think it could be a fish potentially eating another fish or a crab or something going on and then also same thing with the dusting it could be they think it's something attacking another fish and they just think they could either come for scraps um and that's whenever you're gonna make your opportunity but if they see you early um there's a chance that they won't come by um because they know it's obviously not a fish it could be something dangerous so then they usually veer away but ricky plays this thing perfectly unfortunately there were no fish around but I head to the surface and I make my way over to Bradley and he is hot on a mutton snapper. Uh, you can see him make the drop and same deal. He has his GoPro rocking. So you'll see it a little bit from his point of view as he's closing the gap, dive bombing this mutton. Lands a really good shot right through the top of the head. Um, this thing isn't coming out. I know it's, I saw it was a really good shot. So I'm not stressing to, uh, to try to go, go get my hands on the fish. Um, but I do want to stay down just in case a shark comes around. I want to make sure that, uh, you know, I could fend them off. Or if a shark comes around, they realize that there's a bigger predator there and they don't want to mess with the fish or take their chances on uh, possibly getting injured. But Bradley does the same thing, works his way down his pole spear, slides his hands down that steel slip tip, gets a hold of the fish. Main thing is you want to get your hands in the gills. And then that way you can kind of control the fish, get the knife, brain it, bleed it, gut it, do anything that you need to do with the fish. And uh, he plays this thing perfectly right here. And you notice he's trying to find that sweet spot. Once he does, you'll see that fish just do that little flex, open the mouth. That means he died. And then now he goes ahead and bleeds him and you see it just expand that blood out. You guys, how about those dives? That was some incredible long dives. I hope you guys stayed with me on those crazy amount of fish. We got into them and we had an incredible feast on the beach. And guys, this is the stuff I live for. You gotta get out there, do some adventure and do some diving. And if you haven't seen any of my other videos, I'll link them up in the corner. And if you enjoyed this, go ahead and give it the thumbs up. Consider subscribing so you're tuned in every week. And I will see you guys next week for another adventure. Later.